Hello, welcome back. Let us now go on with the um, promised mandatory testing scheme for value-added tax cases under German law. The um, necessity, ne oh my God, <clears throat> the necessity, sorry, the necessity of such a scheme is evident because making any mistake in the value-added tax treatment of a case can uh, trigger enormous financial problems. For example, if you think you owe the state 90%, confirm that on an invoice which you send to a customer, then you owe these 19% just because you confirmed it in the invoice, even if in reality you had owed 7% or 0%. Um, and on the other hand, if a customer accepts an invoice, a business customer accepts an invoice where too high a VAT amount is confirmed, then that customer cannot claim the, claim the input tax refund for the exceeding amount. So, if you make an error, you have to pay more than you owe and your customer will have less input VAT than he or she expected. So highly important to be able to check any transaction which happens, your whole output and also everything you buy, your whole input for correctness. And that is only possible if the way how things must be checked is very, very clear. So it's absolutely indispensable and all experts agree on that, that someone, to, someone who tries to solve a VAT case in German law never deviates from that standard testing scheme, never leaves out some of the uh, required steps because if you jump over one of the steps, the result could become completely wrong. So whenever you see a VAT case and have the idea, oh, I directly know where it's heading on, um, where the outcome will be and where the tricks are and the traps. Then if you leave out some steps and concentrate you on what you regard as important, then you must know no person who has to if you're great or to, to have an interview with you for a job or so, no expert person will ever regard that as a sign of intelligence and knowledge. They will all regard it as a sign of incompetence and carelessness. So train to stick to that testing scheme under all circumstances. And naturally, if you want to present yourself as somebody who knows value added tax, it will after a while be the case that you know that testing scheme by heart. And um, so if you already, if you still have to look it up, uh, don't know it by heart, that would already be regarded as a negative signal in a job interview or something like that. Well, <clears throat> Uh, one important thing is the testing scheme in other countries might be slightly different because you know under the European Union directives, every country still has an own legal text and it might be that they organize their law according to a slightly different scheme so that probably their recommended approach to deal with their laws might be a bit different. For example, um, there is even a difference between the structure of the German Tax Act and the VAT directive of the EU, namely that um, tax exemptions are in Germany at the second step in the testing scheme, whereas in the directive they are rather placed towards the end of the directive after all the regular cases. but stick to the testing scheme in Germany when it comes to German cases. That's the most important message now and here. Well, 
the testing steps are as follows the first is summed up by the keyword taxability is the transaction which you have to check a taxable transaction the first thing which you must notice here is in vat we don't check persons we check transactions and so um, you only check the event of the transaction according to if it can with regard to if it can be covered by the VAT Act at all. Taxable could be described as can something at all be covered by the scope of the VAT Act. Um, there are different taxable transactions. In former times there were up to five different cases which could be um, taxable. Nowadays three have been left over. Um, paragraph one, one, number one is the most frequent ones, two exceptions, two and three have been abolished and worked into the basic rule of number one. And um, the alternatives are one, one, number five, the so-called acquisition of goods from the rest of the EU, so-called intra-community acquisition. And if goods come into the country from outside the EU, then the importation of goods, one, one, number four, USDG. Uh, the next paragraphs then are nothing else than a nice explanation of the terms uh, which have been used in that first paragraph of the law. Now, if it comes out that something could be taxable or is taxable, so that a K that a German tax on that transaction can be imagined, then the second step is, is there a tax exemption or a tax liability? Um, the general rule is whatever can be taxed, so whatever is taxable, will be taxed if there is not a tax exemption on that. So the second step then checks, okay, if it's taxable, is there an exemption? If not, then the result will be as there is no exemption, which can be seen from paragraph four, then the transaction is liable to tax. If it's liable to tax, then it's clear a tax will be due, so it has to be computed. For computing a tax, you need two different parts, elements, the tax base, and the tax rate. So it cannot surprise you that the tax base is regulated next in the law. The main rule here is to be found in paragraph 10, section 1 USDG. That simply is take the net amount of the consideration. And for some rare or extraordinary cases, where a consideration is not paid for a transaction which triggers VAT, or where the consideration which the customer paid could be manipulated downwards because of non-business relevant aspects, there is an additional replacement tax base in 10.4 USDG, sometimes called the minimum tax base, which then has to be checked um, additionally. Now, yes, as I told you, after tax base, naturally tax rate is necessary. And you know, we in Germany have two tax rates. Some other EU states have up to three or sometimes a bit more due to some very old exceptions, which could be carried on under the EU directive. But in principle, you find all our tax rates the German ones in 12.1 and 12.2. 12.1 is the regular rate at the moment, 19%. 12.2 is the uh, reduced rate, so 7%. And very often um, the reduced rate applies to the delivery of um, a catalog of certain goods, which are listed in a long list. And naturally, such a long, long list is a bit Um, unconvenient for 
yeah, for legal text. And so the list has been um, added as an appendix or a supplement to the USDG and its a supplement or appendix to German Anlage 2 to the USDG. After you found out and computed the amount of tax as the product of tax base and tax rate, you have to decide about some formalities. First of all, we have up to now only proven that a given transaction must be paid for. but We have not yet decided by whom. So the taxpayer has to be decided. Uh, usually that's the entrepreneur, but there are some special cases where instead of an entrepreneur, the customer is in a special situation responsible for the payment of the tax and is uh, by law declared to be the only person which can be addressed by um, the fiscal authorities for the payment of the tax regularly. That's clear, VAT is paid by entrepreneurs because it's designed as an indirect tax. Our next question is then, when does the tax arise? That's rather curious. Um, you know, it has a bit of a romantic idea to think of the arisal of the sun. And um, yeah, the idea is just you must know when the tax comes into being, when the tax begins to exist, when you have a liability and when you not yet have one. For example, imagine somebody sells and sells and sells and never hands in a tax declaration. Now you catch that person and say, you committed tax fraud. You didn't give us the necessary information which was due to us. Um, so. Hiding information is committing tax fraud. Now, taxpayer says, well, I intended to do, had no time, and I thought I handed in all the information at the end of the year or so. Um, if you want to oblige somebody to give information, you must also determine until which deadline the information has to be given. Otherwise, there is a dangerous gap in legal certainty. Um, so you have to determine when the tax declaration is due. Naturally, you have also to determine when the tax has to be paid, so when the amount is due. And it even makes sense to decide when the tax liability begins to exist. Because when you have a tax liability, probably you can't declare in the same second. So you will have to decide when it comes into existence. That plays a role, for example, if somebody falls insolvent, if um, the tax liability begins to exist before or afterwards. Um, the arisal of the tax is the first moment when a tax begins to exist. That is also the first moment when you are able to pay the tax, because nobody can ever pay off a debt which does not exist yet. Did you ever try to pay back a credit to a bank before you got the credit money? That's not possible. So it's the earlier date, the earliest date at which you can pay off the tax debt. And the tax arisal also usually determines which version of the law counts for the determination of your tax burden. You know, um, from time to time, tax rates are changed. And now imagine you do something at the end of December or beginning of January and the tax rate just changes when the year changes. Naturally, it is now highly decisive to decide if, you, if your tax burden arose already under the old law, so then the old rate still counts, or already under the um, existence of the new legal rules. So all that is determined by tax arisal, the moment when the tax burden begins to exist. You must fix that. And as this also determines for which months you have to hand in a tax declaration, 
or you have to mention that specific transaction in the tax declaration, it's highly important for your accounting and proper dealing with your tax obligations too. Um, for tax declaration, actually, you have obligations. That's usually not a very interesting field. More interesting is how you have to write the invoice. Usually there are some standardized elements which you must name and which must be on the invoice. There are from time to time additional uh, parts of information which you have to add. So thinking about the contents of the invoice makes sense, at least in cases where the contents deviates from the standard contents. Um, sometimes you are also, or very often you are also required under the accounting rules and also from the tax perspective to keep the information and store it properly so that as later tax inspection can be done properly. You sometimes must notify the tax office and so on and so on. Um, there is something for cross-border activities but only for certain cross-border activities like the so-called recapitulative recapitulative statement oh my god and um, by the way in germany it's also a long word and it's not not really more convenient um, then in my personal testing scheme i always add one additional entry here if the case shows any extraordinary peculiarity so no testing scheme is really comprehensive. Um, so one might ask oneself at the end if some extraordinary thing has been seen during the lecture of during reading the lecture. And during reading the text where you have the idea you need to make a comment at the end. For example, here you can um, make a comment if the invoice which the entrepreneur has issued was issued correctly or if it is wrong because if something has been dealt with in the wrong way is something which you can only comment after you exactly know how it should have been. So this is a good, this is a good reason for inserting that step here. And at the end of a good case, you also think about the right to deduct input tax. And as you have two people involved, the seller and the client, depending on the case situation, probably you have to answer for the one or the other. And if you want to be on the safe side, you will comment input tax claims given on the side of the seller, for example, for the raw material needed for the product which has been just sold, or, and you should also try to comment on potential input tax claims of the client, the customer, if that can be seen. And there is another uh, potential distinction. Input tax claims can arise in the first year when you buy um, or receive a service or a good or they can later be corrected in later years under specific rules. So you should also think about input tax deduction effects in the first year or later. And therefore there is paragraph 15 and 15a. What you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, is now surprising. Um, if you go back to the beginning, you will see that the paragraphs of the law are arranged in exact parallelism to the steps of the testing scheme. Paragraph 1, paragraph 4, the tax base then follows in paragraph 10, and the gaps are always filled up by um, the explanation of important terms which show up in the basic rules. Um, for the tax rate is 12, formalities begin with 13, um, 13a, 13b, extraordinary things are not always there in the law, but 14, 14c, um, contents of an invoice, and the input tax question follows in 15 and 15a. So you see here how much um, the law and the official 
widespread and nearly or completely mandatory testing scheme in Germany go hand in hand and um, correspond to each other. That shows you this is not rather a personal invention of some teachers. This is a general convention in Germany and it's really mandatory. Also courts will follow it when they um, assess a case. Again, um, just to remind you what taxability is about, the general idea of taxability was, can it be imagined at all that a certain event, transaction, can be subjected to German VAT law? And uh, the main case, the main yeah, possibility that something can be taxable is to be found in 1, 1, number 1. So first paragraph, first subparagraph or section and the very first number, that is naturally the very, very most important uh, event or case which can show up. It's just the simple normal selling of goods and services. And um, the law just describes this as follows. Taxable is an event where an entrepreneur who acts as such. So entrepreneur is always an entrepreneur, you know, 24 hours. Um, even after you closed your shop and go home, you still remain an entrepreneur, but you are then in your private sphere and do no longer act as an entrepreneur. And to underline that, we have these two criteria. An entrepreneur acting within the scope of his business or range of his enterprise or however you call it. Turnover, so taxable transactions are only those which are not made for free. An entrepreneur cannot be taxed with 90% of things uh, which are made for free. So it's um, necessarily a condition that only events can trigger VAT, which are done for consideration. Um, these three elements are rather the unimportant ones because they usually are given or don't change during the life of an entrepreneur. The most decisive ones then are deliveries and services are covered by value added tax. A delivery is something where you sell a good and the service is everything else which you can do for somebody else. And last but not least, the last is nearly the most important thing in uh, everyday life, the place to which that delivery or service is attributed by the law, the location or the place of service or delivery, because that criterion decides if um, a certain transaction will be attributed to German taxation or to in, no, Irish taxation or Spanish or wherever. If all these five elements are fulfilled, so if we have an entrepreneur acting within the scope of business for consideration, making a delivery or doing a service, and that the location of the delivery of service is in the German Inland, then the transaction or the event is taxable. If one criterion at least is missing, then the whole transaction is automatically not taxable in Germany. Um, but for example, if the element which is missing is only the place or location of the delivery or service, then it can be because all the other countries have an identical contents of that taxable event in their laws, that if the place of delivery turns out to be Spain, then it would not be taxable in Germany, but automatically you could bet on the fact that it will be taxable in Spain, because under the EU directive, Spain has a taxable event defined in their law, which absolutely has the same contents, apart from the difference naturally, that from the Spanish perspective, something else is inland than from the German perspective. 
Um, apart from 11 number one, the case which covers 99.99 or so percent, uh, just a guess figure of all taxable events, there are some additional events uh, which can be um, the cause for a tax. Historically, the first is 11 number four importing a good which crosses the border of the EU into the direction of the inland and is taxed by customs or yeah taxed or dealt with by the customs offices in the inland then it's an importation of a good in the inland and triggers importation value added tax that's nothing else than the regular VAT but levied on the occasion when you import a good across the border. And since we have no longer any border controls between different EU countries, the transfer of a good over an internal border can no longer be taxed by customs officers. But um, at least when entrepreneurs bring in goods from outside, um, into the inland from other countries of the EU into the German inland, they are required to um, register or communicate that acquisition to the fiscal authorities on their own and declare the tax on the value of the goods which they brought into the inland in their monthly tax declaration. Um, these two additional cases can, for beginners, still be ignored. That is something which we will discuss very, very much later. Naturally, you need to know about the two cases, but not yet, but later. Yeah. So, this leads us to the next chapter, that will be taxability. And naturally, I have talked about 25 or 30 minutes already, so probably you need a break. At least I do. So let's finish for this time and um, enjoy the break, but come back. I hope you I hope you come back and I hope you remember some of the things I told you just now. Um, and I see you back soon when we talk about the different elements, conditions for taxability. So the five elements which are the important ones which you need to check in order to apply German VAT law to a regular event. Thanks for watching. Till next time.